And tonight's gonna be interesting. All right, welcome back to Project Zomboy. BDP here as usual, and tonight it's about to get weirder. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't remember exactly where we left off, which kind of sucks. Oh, I, I remember now. So we were dealing with uh, standard life in Project Zomboy. We had made it to Rosewood, and that's effectively where we started. We got a bottle finally. It took us in like three days to get a bottle going. Um, we stacked up the house with food in various different ways, and we got books now. So that is where we left off. I know that I need to get a chance to start reading uh, some of this material and whatnot. Now, <clears throat> hello, PRMR. Math 1.1 equals what? 50. Let's just be facetious for the purpose of being facetious. Um, nevertheless, <laughs> I know that I want to read a lot of this material. And of course, it's about doing various different things associated with it. Fantasy Gamer, I have no idea why we say good boy to a situation like that, bro. Anyway. But I also need to recognize, you know, some of the limitations. I don't know what this run is going to be like, and I am scared to go outdoors. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we have added some more eeriness, creepiness. So let me be honest and be upfront about it. You know, our first day I had added the a mod that was supposed to make the zombies a little more scary but uh it didn't work out because i don't know why it, it didn't overwrite the sound file so i had to do it manually and i'm running on linux so it is what it is no we're not dead uh we are alive we are a weekend and we're waiting for the helicopter event actually if i would be honest about it um so yeah that said now i've got it working i did some testing because i had time to do some testing which is funny i never have time to do anything oh um, and we're gonna see how it goes <laughs> yeah yeah we are at the Rosewood fire station so i don't actually have to be in the rv but it kind of just made me feel nice to be in the rv since we had the mod it's kind of one of those things use it get used to it showcase it etc that said i do think that I recall kind of going through some of our sacks of food and we got to use this stuff before it goes bad, right? So open a bag. Have I played Fallout 4? Yes. Uh, I played it like two streams ago. We were playing Fallout 4 actually. Oh, uh, fun. Yes. But you know, we always come back to Project Zomboid one or two nights after playing another game. <laughs> I don't usually stick with those other games for very long. Now, if you're asking, have I played since then? I played on my own a little bit, yeah. Recorded it as well. I didn't really put it on the channel because I don't really feel like it belongs to the channel. Um, survival mode, I'm still not accustomed to. And I was actually looking at a lot of other YouTubers, you, YouTubers content around Fallout. It's pretty saturated. There's no reason for me to try to get into that. Um, yeah, it's fun to play on my own. Even playing here on the channel is nice and all, but it's, it's just not something I should be focused on, in my personal opinion. But if you're going somewhere with that question, let me know and we can talk about it. All right, so let me get rid of this heavy stuff. I got a wood axe. I'll stick in here. Don't need to carry it from, with me right now. Always keep a crowbar on us. I like the idea of dropping the antibiotics here, so I will keep the bandage just in case. I think, yeah, we're still working on that. And my health is actually, my health, my uh, weight has balanced out so that's actually a good point now uh have i ever played madden i don't play football games i don't play any sport game actually that is definitely not a thing for me ah that's right i need to read the mechanics book because we have the rv so we need to be able to take care of the rv it's just something that we're not doing at the moment so let's go through that real quick we'll do some reading we'll do some reading start the night well start the day well i guess you would say uh trapping is what it is don't really care about it, but it is what it is. Bruh. Why did I get a bruh out of not playing sports games? I have the theory and opinion of, you know, if there's something you can do in real life, do it in real life. You know, uh, playing football on a video game instead of getting around with other people, I'll just get together with other people and play with them. So that's how I feel about that. I can't go kill zombies in real life. So playing Project Zombie would make sense. I can run on the field. <laughs> so, 
Out. Good. Did you get any new clothes since uh, you're a life saviors? I am very confused, but. Sleep. I think it's sleep time. Yeah, it's sleep time. Not some people, though. I assume you're saying that some people can't can get out and actually go, you know, play sports and whatnot. And that's fair. Uh, some people cannot, but I have the privilege to be able to do so. I have the physical capability of doing so. Therefore, I will. All right. Get my cooking experience. I don't really feel like I need it anymore, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, we're almost at level six, so that's nice. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to leave. We're going to go out to the Rosewood Fire Station, and I need to think about what's next. We need to collect some tools. That's what we need to do. I mentioned before we need to work on the car. We've got all the major tools. I don't have a, um, crap, a jack to lift the vehicle when I need to, like, replace stuff, and that's fine. But we'll get our hands on one of those. We'll check out the town a little bit. Take some food with us. Always important. And let's do it. So click, exit, go. Get out the car. All right. So let's stick the books upstairs. I just don't want to handle this type of storage to the moment. Oh, and that's another good point. If I could find a car to use to work on my mechanic skill because we need to take care of our, our ride. Very important. However, in addition, if I can start finding some overhead cabinets to put inside the RV, that'd be great too. So that's my thought at the moment. You said gloves. So since gloves saved our life before, we have gloves. Uh, are you saying we need replacement gloves? Yeah, we do have a hole in this glove at the moment. So that's a fair call out. And this is a fair call out. All right, let's get rid of this weight. Big shout out to foraging skill because our foraging skill needs to go up one more level before I can read the next book. So we will do that as well. Um, forever since the cabinets. We, you know, us and cabinets on this channel, us and bases. I think that should be more fair. Um, Having a good base, having a very well-rounded base, having enough storage to manage your base and make it look good is very important. It's very important. All right, so let's see how this mod works. Oh, <laughs> I'm very concerned about using Git, but you know, let, let's keep it simple, keep it real. And we're outdoors. Oh man, I forgot about all this fighting. All right, so. I mentioned before if I can get my hands on a vehicle, a few vehicles actually. Uh, thinking about that, let's take a look at the knowledge training material. Uh, I'll pull this over. Sprinters are on here, so I need to really be careful about what I'm doing, and I recognize that. Uh, standard, we need to do the commercial models magazine, which kind of sucks now that I think about it. Um, that's what's going to help us work on trucks, and the RV is considered a truck too. Ah, I got a key in here, which is nice. Let's take a look to see if the engine or anything is good here. If it's functional enough, I can work with it. If it's not functional enough, that's going to mess with me. Nope. Uh, but it can be something to work on. Maybe put some gas in it. I don't know. Let me think about that one for a little bit. So maybe what we do is go. I said maybe. What we do is go over towards the school. <laughs> oh, that is the plan. This road should be mostly cleared from the ridiculousness it took to get here. So I'm kind of open to that. I have two axes, which is nice. But I also need to point out that I am not a park ranger. So I don't have axe bonuses. Yeah, I don't have axe bonuses. So just a thought to keep in the back of your head. Uh, we won't do very well with gaining experience there. And so the fastest way to the school is to go through this neighborhood. I don't know if it's the smartest way to do it, but we're going to try. Oh. oh, sweet. I can actually read that book now. Yo. 
Yeah. Yeah, that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> um, woo! <laughs> That's gonna mess with me playing this game now. Oh, God. Ah. I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't expecting to be shouted at from the zombie just standing there walking at me. Ah. Okay. Can we, like... All right, now that that was weird. <laughs> hey, I put commentary just so you are aware already how to use generator mag. Nice. Uh, would a zombie even scream like that? I mean, it depends on the the the, the lore, right? So I'm a big fan. Of, oh crap of uh 28 days later and the zombies in 28 days later definitely scream at you while they're running like it's a cons consistent amount of shouting that is happening oh it is eerie oh. but imagine like a massive group of zombies running at you and screaming i'm not gonna sit there and fight like i usually do i'm gonna run uh oh. battle cries you know you gotta think about good old-fashioned battle cries is he laughing Yeah, that's... Ooh. That's creepy. Yeah, definitely creepy. I love it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's exactly why we put this mod in here. It's gonna do it for me. Uh, it definitely changes the game. I... Mm. I actually like it more because it's not like they're, you just hear grunts. Uh, it's a little more personality to the zombies. Oh, crap. This is the benefit of not hearing Creed. <laughs> not for me. Not for me at all. Oh, and imagine, you know, how loud my my headphones are while I'm playing compared to what you're hearing. It's going to be a thing. Oh, God. All right. Yeah, that's scary. Ooh, I got to remember. Sprinters. Yeah, sprinters. I did take care of this already. Yeah, I had made it this far. I kind of turned it back originally and... What not? So we did, you know, do a small stint to get to the, uh, oh crap, the school, but now it's a matter of getting inside, getting what we need. If I can find that magazine, we're perfect. So that's all we're here for. Check for a magazine. Don't get bogged down on other ridiculousness. I can't recall if there are any books that I care about at the moment. This ain't the time for me to think about it. Oh God. Okay, that is a group. That is a group group. That's my favorite window to go through over there. So, and there's a group over here. Let's uh, let's not leave it the chance. Sprinter. Is that another sprinter over there? They can jump through windows, yes. You can chill, bro. Jesus. Jesus. It's just one zombie just making that noise. Yeah. I can see the, the old movie sound concept. Oh, um, nope, nope. Part of me feels like running in there and just jumping the fence, but I don't know what else. Like, I can't see. Ah, okay. More like ghost. I can I, I get the ghost part. That's fair. Mm. Mm. I don't know. <clears throat> There's a sprinter over there. Crap. Can y'all die? Thank you for following over. 
Got you. Can I get you before you stand up? Oop. That's okay. <sighs> All right. Uh, can you get them sprinters? Again, like you said, remember that zombies can jump through windows. So if they see me at a window, they can jump through and come running. Anybody? Uh, come on. Come on. It doesn't have to be that loud. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Game. 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 Ooh. Shut up. <laughs> God. I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I might change that one, but... We'll, we'll, we'll let it ride for a little bit to see how long we deal with those type of noises. When you get a massive group like that, it's a thing, for sure. Can you die? Oh. It's gonna get annoying. <laughs> it's definitely gonna get annoying. Oh, um, all right, let's, uh, let's get our stupid cells inside. And not get dead. This window's already broken. Um, why do I feel weird? Is, there no, is the power out? Did the power go out while we were coming here? Oh no. Are there any zombies in here? There are no zombies in the bookstore. Well, bookstore, the, the, the library here. Okay, so we're doing the, the oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I already found the magazine. The first thing we found was the magazine. That's perfect. Oh, we can get out of here now. Let's take a look at our skills. If I could find carpentry level two, I'll take it, you know, so, but we're not going to focus on it. And I know I didn't get forging level five from the other bookstore. So magazine collect it. Uh, metalworking, take it. Carpentry level two, forging level five. Let's take a look. No, no. Ooh, engineering magazine, yes. Farming magazine, yes. No, no, no. Eh, carpentry level two, there it is. Yes, and yes. Take, take, take. All right. Good cooking. We're all set there. Um, the mechanics magazine for commercial use was the one that we came here for, and we've already got it. So it's a pretty good deal. And forging level five. We're done. All books we need for this run have been collected. So let's get out of here. I refuse to stay here, do any looting or anything like that, because I don't need any of it. Uh, <laughs> the game gave us some grace. That's definitely true. That's not common for us either, but it definitely happened. How are skills looking? We're gaining a lot in light, light footed and sneaking because that's exactly what we'll be doing this save. Um, yeah. No sprinters. Hmm. I have to play with the um, the sound a little bit. I don't know. If it gets annoying, I don't mind the creepy noises. I don't think it feels authentic is my issue. Like there's a way to adjust which noise is attached to what and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe, but we'll see. You know, this is our first real time playing with it. So let's just take a look. They were good though. We made it. Can I go into one of these houses and like catch the TV? I'm not going to make it back to the fire station. There's a lot of zombies around. You know, I just took a major risk and I recognize that. We turn it on. Power. Do this. Uh, room broken glass? Anybody see me? Nope. 
good. And all we're doing is getting experience. We will run for it. We will not stay here. We will run for it if we have to. Yeah, all the ones that busted here, which is nice. All we're doing is getting experience from the carpentry. That's literally what we're doing here. We're trying not to speed up the time because of the windows being already busted. Oh, come on, carpentry. I'm so scared. <laughs> All right, I'll eat the potatoes. Remember, we're still managing our weight. We're not underweight, we're not overweight, we're just the right weight. Uh, ooh, finally found a cooking pot. Yes. Uh, no salt. But we did find salt last episode, so we're going to focus on that statement. It's people and not having salt in their houses is ridiculous to me. I feel like it's like the most common thing that you're going to use in a kitchen. All right, let's get out of here. We good? All right. That moment when you hear uh, for any sounds and even your clicking sounds loud. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> this game has a way of getting you like super hyper sensitive to everything. So I understand that. But yeah, no, we're, we're doing good. Um, I was hoping and actually I said I was hoping. I didn't really check and I will check this setup here. If there's a jack in one of these hoods, then we're good to go for everything we need for maintenance on a vehicle. Duct tape, empty bottle, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's not bad. So objectives achieved, you know, that's, that's the good part, right? So let's get ourselves home and then from there we'll unpack what we've collected um assess the situation and then decide what we're gonna do next i say that but realistically speaking we just need to take a moment to read all of our material there are zombies right hi guys you didn't see me we're gonna act like you didn't see me All right, we made it back. <laughs> We're alive. Should be happy and thankful to the universe. Remember, we're still playing with the random zombie mod, so uh, that means that these doors, <laughs> there could be a scenario where one of them opens. Um, then also, remember, we have a mod that allows the zombies to jump through windows, so the windows is not really safe. We need to put up barricades if we're going to use this place as a defense which that actually is a good idea i kept the wood axe for that reason i went to chop down the trees back here and then start you know setting up um some barricades here on these windows and on this door here and the front door in this window because if i do that i have layers of protection um at least from the helicopter event i refuse in the scenario of sprinters being caught outside and <laughs> dealing with the helicopter event. There's no way. So I need to really start getting set up to deal with the helicopter event. Uh, lights. Can I just simple? Yep. Sweet. 
Just need to start getting enough materials to block out the windows. Like I don't want light to come through them. So three per window is what it's gonna take. Oh, this sucks. Nothing. Crap. Damn, this is why the firewood would be better. You know what? That's what we're going to do. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about this the wrong way. If we grab a few stuff. All right, let's do what we can first. Because, like I said, we're getting set up to deal with the helicopter vet. I hear zombie. And I barricade, please barricade. All right, so even though I can't see through, they can't see me either. So that's perfect. Uh, I can't barricade you. Why can't I barricade you? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, two, na oh, I don't have enough nails, okay. Silly me, 25 minutes late and I haven't missed the helicopter event. No, you have not missed the helicopter event. You haven't missed anything actually. Oh, you've missed some of the new noises that we've added, but we're trying to decide if we like them or not. So, oh, <laughs> don't we're wrong. One of the major reasons why we added this because we knew we weren't going to like it, but it doesn't make sense to have. And you'll hear them as we play, silly. And you can I hear a zombie. If you listen closely, you can hear whispering. That whispering is the sound of a zombie. And it's might not be inside the base, but it could be. It is literally making my skin crawl. God. And never I love horror. Oh, it is a it's a thing for me. Like I love the feeling of feeling scared. <laughs> so, ah, <laughs> it's probably because I don't get scared in real life. Like it's not a thing for me. Oh, no, I'm saying that I do get scared in real life, but because uh, the gender role that I play in life, I feel like I don't have the right to be scared outwardly. It's nice when you can just watch a horror film and not have to think about being a man. <laughs> um, so that's what I mean by I love horror movies. Can I disassemble the sport bed? Yes, I can. Sweet. So they must be outside on the, the back side of this building, which is fine by me. So as long as they don't find their way inside. All right, I got just planks uh, i need some some nails you know i need to check those supply closets i didn't really check the supply closets oh, we're working up oh, oh i got just two just two is not enough that's not great all right could be worse We only need the one bed. Actually, we don't need a bed at all in here because if I think about it, uh, we've been sleeping inside the RV, right? So it doesn't hurt to grab what we can and keep it moving. Let's take what we have and get to a TV. No, well, do we need one? Yeah, we'll still do it. We, I mean, it's free experience. No reason to miss out on it, right? Like horror movies when they're interesting plot, uh, happen to see moment dreams, so on and so forth. <laughs> you have to be mentally ready. Yes, 
<laughs> being mentally prepared for a home is important. That's also why I put it in, you know, my alert for the night that we added some some noises because I acknowledge that there is a preparation phase. And if you're not prepared to deal with something horror related, you, you might be jumping out of your seat or feeling some type of way when you're trying to sleep and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, preparation, super important. And I need some more nails. I think I only need one more set of nails, actually. So we're almost ready. <laughs> you watch something silly after watching something horror to, so you can go to sleep. I hear that. Oh, that silly still needs to be engaging. You know, <laughs> you don't watch something stupid and it doesn't like overwrite the things that you're watching before. Oh, that that's just how I feel about that portion of it. But I agree. All right. Foraging experience done. Like I said, the whole point of what we're doing at the moment is getting set up to deal with the helicopter event, right? Um, helicopter event has not dropped yet, which is good. Perfect, by the way. So if I can secure the main entry points to the building, um, we're golden. Obviously, I won't be doing anything at the doors and the garage, but those aren't the easy entry points, so... All right, let's take a look outside first. Nothing perfect barricade. Need something funny, not just horror, stick my mind, so on and so forth. Yep. And it says unbarricade. Unbarricade bad. Alright, windows sealed. So nothing will visibly catch us when we walk down here and we come out of the RV. So nice. Next place to barricade. So my choice is my choice is to barricade this door. The reason why I choose the door is if I don't choose the door, then I have to barricade the windows that are over here. And I think it's three of them. So it's actually easier to barricade this door than it is to barricade all the windows over there. And that same thing is true for these doors over here. There are two more windows and two doors there. So do I need to do all of that? Maybe not. If I barricade just this side, I have, you know, three exit points. But this still causes its entry and this still causes entry. So my thought process is still to do what I'm doing. <laughs> and yeah, we're, we're trying to give ourselves the best possible scenario to survive. Major reason for that. And you got to remember, we are playing with sprinters. So a helicopter situation with sprinters is a nightmare and is almost an instant death. <laughs> no matter the build. So it's just kind of a thought. Uh, so like watching horror movie, uh, scary movie and then watching the scary movie. Hmm? Like watching a scary movie and then watching a scary movie. Confused. I I personally would watch a scary movie and then another scary movie. That, that is definitely something I would do. Oh. Uh, again, personally. So now, do I have all the gear? Yes, I have all the gear. Everything I would need in order to do all the major cooking essentials, which is good. Um, usually, uh, I think there's a fork that I need too for one more recipe. But other than that, I think we're set. Uh, comedy horror. Oh, scary movie. I got it. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since I watched a uh, scary movie. Wayne's Bros, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a bit over my head too, but you know, we got it. It took us a minute, but we all, we're all on board. We're all on the same page now, so. As I start reading. <laughs> oh, 
Although, I mean, scary movies aren't scary these days. It's not like back in the day. And I'm saying back in the day, I'm going to date myself. One of the first scary movies I ever watched before was Pumpkinhead. And that movie scared me to the point where I didn't sleep for almost three days. And what I mean by didn't sleep, I was legitimately a kid. All right, like, hey, it's bedtime. My father put me to sleep, you know, in my room. And I had sat there and looked at the ceiling because it was always like, it was storming for three days when I, I finished that movie. And it was like a staple in that movie where, you know, Pumpkinhead came out in the storm and was just murdering folk. And I was like, bro, <laughs> it took me a long time to get over that. But I don't know. What is the scariest movie? I think Pumpkinhead still takes the cake for me in terms of like how bad it was in my response. Oh, uh, yeah. Freddy Cougar kind of did it for a little bit, too, because Freddy attacked you in your sleep. So it was such a big deal to go to sleep and then people mess with you. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why we're having this conversation. Well, I know why we're having this conversation. I'm trying to set up product example to be scary and we're talking about scary stuff. So this first scary movie you watched was Coraline. Coraline is not scary. We're talking about the animated like show, right? I said show movie. You know, little girl in the house and the, the witch who wants to take your eyes from the, the small children. We, we are talking about the same thing, right? There, wash all my clothes. Now, in fairness, I recognize that scary is, is scary no matter what you're watching. Fair enough, but at the same time, that I don't know if I would have I wouldn't have thought of that as a scary movie. So now I'm not thinking it of it as we talk about it. I can see it. Why am I equipping the books instead of reading? I said books, magazines. Oh, read. So it's the best I can get outside of Goosebumps. Okay. Okay. So, hmm. Coraline. I, I think my problem is I've been conditioned all my life for things that are Tim Burton-ish, you know, with its style and animations and so on and so forth. Um, I'm saying Tim Burton-ish, like The Nightmare Before Christmas is like his only staple. But if you if you take the level, there's a difference in my personal opinion of that suspense eerie to scary. And a lot of it does have to do with the antagonist, right? Um, so to that, I can definitely see Coraline being rated as a scary film. It may not be, you know, super horror level, but I can definitely see it being scary. And that's fair. That's fair. All right, let's see. Are we good? Um, so magazines have been read, except for this one. Wilson well, Young almost had anything scary me. We go to sleep, transport into something worse. Like Jurassic Park was scary, and then it's somewhat similar to that. And the kind of okay, so <laughs> back up. Jurassic Park, you know, for young children is scary, without a doubt. And um, you have to think about the fact that you still are taking what is effectively a monster. You know, a a the dinosaur is a monster, and then you let it loose as it tears people apart. No matter how you frame that, it's going to be scary. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, and every version of Jurassic Park does that. It's not like it's, hey, it's always a fun ride, so on and so forth. It always turns into this, like, you know, humans and their hubris getting themselves killed. Um, it's implied or explicit, but it doesn't change the fact it's there. So, yeah, I can definitely see Jurassic Park being scary. Yeah. Okay, so I need more. 
dinosaurs not around. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's just, just not, that's not a norm. So to call it scary makes a lot of sense. Uh, crap. So we need nails before I can do anything else. And I can start disassembling more stuff so I don't have to go outside. Or I can go outside and deal with some stuff. And in truth, I feel like that's the play. Oh, we need to go out. Oh God. Yeah. We need to go out to the back side of the of the building, deal with any zombies that are caught in the fence inside the fence line. And then I'll feel safer doing what I plan on doing next. But oh god. So Good part about doing this, no visibility in. Bad part about it, no visibility out. You know, and you just have to deal with those type of scenarios. I acknowledge that it's annoying, but I acknowledge it. So am I ready to go outside and hope for the best? I feel like I am. Oh man, all right, Let, let's, let's do it. Let's do it, yeah. We open the door and no zombies. <laughs> All right, cool. So I said before I was hearing a zombie back here when I was on this wall and when I was upstairs here. So there should be a handful, one or two. Aha, that's just the one. It's more than one, that's okay. Down to you. All right. Yes, you're over here. Yeah, some of the noises just don't sync to the situation. And I think that's my issue there. Oh, um, not to say it wouldn't be like, maybe I should turn the setup a little bit more to like the zombies being tough or something like extremely difficult to kill. So you're always trying to sneak. So I can see it being a problem when you're inside of a house and a zombie sitting there and you don't know which door it's behind. I can see that being eerie, but it can get a little janky if it's just a random fight and the person just standing there. Oh, um, so I like the attempt of the mod and when I originally set it up, because I, I didn't even play test it. I kind of just turned it on and made sure the sounds were. You start inside of a house and I walked into another house and you hear the noise. It's like, yeah, you're good. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I already know how to kind of disable it. So it's not an issue. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how it works out. If it gets annoying for the night, it's not a big deal for me to like pause, come out of the game remove all the stuff and then jump back in the game. So uh, it wouldn't kill the stream, but you would just have blackness for a moment. Uh, we'll deal with that. Okay, I was hoping that this will work and I am so scared to do it. What am I talking about? I want to chop down a tree. Just one should be enough. Uh, if I cut down a tree, I can get my hands on a log. And if I can get my hands on the log, um, I have a few. Ooh, that's perfect. I've got two logs. Keep it for the stream. Heard. All right, let's get our butts inside. So it's, again, non-issue. And again, we don't want the helicopter event to drop on us right now. We're just not ready for it. Um, okay, so I have the planks now. I need the nails still. Hmm. Recommendations. Do we go out into the town, try to hit some of the houses and see if we can get some nails? Or do we disassemble anything that can be disassembled inside of here, get the carpentry experience, and then call it a day? Like, that's the question now. Now, note, I do have a mod in here that allows you to make nails. Uh, I think you need three. So, nails. 
that's place filter all yeah so make nail you need four locks to make a box of nails the reason for that mod is because i do like to play force setups especially on my own a lot and there is no reason why you can't make wood fasteners that is a thing but mind you not a thing in the game but you know it's a thing in real life um so i do like the balance of needing four logs to get a single box but it's still some people feel weird about it which is fine and i didn't intend to do it here so yeah it'd be safer to do it here that's true definitely safer for us to stay here and do the work that we have been doing but it's just not guaranteed like we can get to a point where we disassemble everything not get enough nails and the helicopter event drops anyway and we're not well defended so it's just considerations to take when you do something like this it's it's work oh now this still works our, towards our carpentry experience which is nice too so you know it's just kind of one of those things that playing the game you, you got to deal with game stuff uh, but we are dealing with sprinters and <laughs> that is my biggest concern at the moment we are dealing with sprinters okay so with six nails i can board we're gonna do this door that's the first thing so i need three like i said it's just because there are three windows there that's indefensible oh uh, realistically speaking if i just board up the door i get more bang for my buck is effectively what i'm thinking of so barricade the door all right barricade the door and barricade not to mention if a whole bunch of zombies end up in there, they just end up kind of trapped until they break down this door. But there's no reason for them to break down the door unless they see me. So that's the reason why we did that. Okay, so that actually worked out for us. We've got, uh, we don't have enough planks. Actually, no, we got two more in here. Let me grab those real quick. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way instead of just like sitting inside the RV, which I did test, if we were to sit inside the RV when the helicopter event hits, it is 100% cheese. <laughs> um, because how the, the the RV works, and let me point this out for anybody who doesn't know, we are here, right? In the middle of Rosewood. Um, done a lot of running around, killed a whole bunch of things. This is the forged location, which I originally had intended to write it out here, but now that we've been over here working on... Um, planning on our mechanics that's kind of why I've, I've stuck ourselves here close to the town deal with more cars at least get one inside of the garage over here what next to the rv it gives us you know protection while we work on a mechanic skill however if i was in the rv when you're inside the trailer and rv it teleports you over here there are other rv buildings here based on what is already spawned as well mind you so it's just a space where you it the game the mod can spawn um you know the interior that you're currently sitting in so while you're sitting here the helicopter event actually will happen above you here not at the rosewood fire station so when that happens what the game does is there's no zombies over here right so the helicopter will stay there blah and then when you go back to the rv no zombies have moved anywhere it's just sitting as if nothing happened whatsoever. So that's why I said it's 100% cheese and I'm, I'm not gonna do that. When the helicopter event hits, I wanna be here. Um, so that way, you know, we ride it out. If we deal with sprinters, we have to fight. You know, I, I don't want, want, it be, want it to be cheating. Oh no, I'm about to go to sleep, but <laughs> BB said, what's up zombie? I haven't seen you in a bit. How are you doing? Oh, I feel, yeah. So here's the other planks. So with this, I have enough planks to cover the doors or the two windows, but I need more nails. Ah. Well, Zombie, if you're heading to bed, you know, cheers. Thanks for popping in and saying something and whatnot, but have a great evening and get some sleep. I understand rest is very important. Oh, but if you're willing to hang out for a little bit, we will always have you. All right, so I feel like I'm good here to do some work. So we will disassemble. By the way, I, oh, time. Okay, we've, I was about to say like, we, we still need to work on uh, K 
catching the TV. It's not like TV time is over yet. Ugh, no nails. Probably should have read the carpentry book, but we didn't originally have it. So we are doing what we can with what we've got. I hear a zombie. I hear a zombie. Yes, we definitely have more water. All right, we're getting outside. I don't want to lose the windows just yet. Zombie, what's up? What's up? You in the wrong space. God. All right, so don't want them to see me. Don't want them to come rushing at me. Board these up. They can't see inside, but that's the intent. Board up the doors and they can't easily break down the doors okay um i was gonna do streams when i'm about to go to sleep and then three hours later we're still in some discussion <laughs> that's fair zombie i hear you um uh, as usual I, I appreciate your company so um you know please <laughs> recognize your limitations and if you need to rest rest but if you don't man you're just looking for a little bit of entertainment friendly voice i am here and as I said, I always enjoy your company. All right, let's uh, let's get upstairs. We were getting set up for defense, but we're not going to miss the carpentry show. We only have so much time left before you know the TV is no longer good for us. Um, another thought: I've never found a VHS store in Rosewood. I don't know if there is one. That's a thought. Thank you too, yeah, bro. All right, let's see. Boring. Seriously, I came up here and got nothing. <laughs> game, game. Well, I say that I don't have to. I'm taking risks by sitting downstairs and doing what I'm doing. I can knock out these, right? We're just getting more nails. I have enough for one board. Yeah, that's not enough. I need to. Really get a move on here. More nails. More nails, please. All right, one more nail. Come on. I don't plan on keeping this place as a base. Like I said, we're we're just writing it out, so all this stuff can go. That's that's how I feel. Goodness gracious. Come on. One nail. What is it? To two per, I need a total of 12 to get everything done. But I'll take six and just do the windows for now. I can live with that. Do you think we'd be able to, to play pool for yourself for fun in Project uh, Zombie Apocalypse? So in Project Zomboid, no, but in real life, yeah, of course. Uh, there are a lot of pool games that you can play by yourself that are enjoyable. All right, all right. Oh. Uh... Yep. That's... This is enough. We'll, we'll deal with what we have. Okay. I don't know any. Um, what is it? There's the eight, eight balls. I don't remember what it's called. I'm not a huge pull playing type person, right? But the idea of like, what is it? You set up um, nine balls, if I remember correctly, in the shape of diamond instead of doing the entire triangle. And then from there, you run the numbers, uh, one all the way till nine. And yeah, you see how well you can do that, how fast you can do that, how many hits is it going to take, so on and so forth. Oh, um, you can play pull by yourself. It's kind of the point. <laughs> They're wrong. I'm not saying that it's as fun as playing against somebody else and showing off your skills or running, you know, getting some money out of them. But it's definitely doable. How you can play regular pull by yourself. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Okay. Can you show me the RV? Yeah, here in a second. That's fine. Oh, um, we are going to finish 
defenses. Oh God. Oh God, please don't have seen me. Doesn't look like anybody saw me over there. Barricade, barricade. We won't do any more barricading, it looks like. Uh, all right, we won't do any more barricading. We will drop these planks right outside this door and then we'll hit to the RV. Need to eat something anyway, so. All right, so this is good. And there's the RV. It's a little busted up at the moment, but you know, it is what it is. We, we're dealing with it. So we get in, in the car, we go into enter, and then here you go. The RV is small, but it does the trick. You got yourself a bed. We got the TV. Jesus. Can you hear that noise? I messed up. Oh. Okay. If you hear that noise, that is the helicopter event. The helicopter event hit the moment we got into the RV. Oh, God. So. You, yeah, exactly. So notice. You hear this sound, right? If I exit, you don't hear it at all because the helicopter isn't here. <laughs> all right, the helicopter spawned over where the RV spot is. So we just missed the helicopter bit. The luck, right? <laughs> the timing. And we're talking immediately when we got here, helicopter bit. It's like, ah. Oh. And I said intentionally, I did not want to cheese it, you know. We, Gosh. <laughs> All right. Well, zombie might just be our um, our good luck charm. If <laughs> that sounds like a football stadium, people are singing. Yeah, I. I don't know what the mod creator had in mind when they decided to pick that sound for the helicopter event. It is, oh, <laughs> the gods are back. <laughs> I mean, we could call it the chance of, you know, those who have summoned the zombie apocalypse experience that we're experiencing right now. That's fine. Oh, but it's, a, th that's, that's the helicopter event and there's nothing to be done about it now. <laughs> is it a mod that makes the helicopter drop the loot? Hello, everybody. What's up, Misfit? No. Oh, this is just... A, I don't remember what this is, mod is called. Let me, uh, while we're hanging out here, and I, I'm just gonna let that play out because I can't do anything about it now. So, it is a little annoying, though. I don't know how it would feel if, like, a bunch of zombies were bursting into the space while that was shouting at me at the same time. Oh, goodness. Here it is. So, Knock Knock Horror Sound Mod. That is the name of the mod. Knock Knock Horror Sound Mod. Anyway. So like I said, uh, crap. I'm going to exit because it's, again, not digging the noise itself. <laughs> and talk. Oh! I hear the sound again. Did the game allow for that to happen? Interesting. Okay, so I should have just left beforehand. Well, we got some defense taken care of, and that's good. I'm not gonna sleep while, Jesus, it's loud. Alright. I think the sound just cut. <laughs> Helicopter was fast. <laughs> it might have just been playing because I had exited while the soundtrack started. No, it's still playing. You know, I think it, it was just still playing from when I was there. Oh, 
I've got zombies. I heard I heard stuff break. And we're tired. We had did so much setup. Maybe I shouldn't have the TV on. Well, let's see if we die. That's all we can do now. How long does the helicopter event last? I can't remember. Oh. Yeah, do I go out there or do I like try to stay in here and hope for the best? Good question, right? <sighs> D word. <laughs> They're still yelling. Well, I found a cool public server that I've been playing for for about two weeks. That's what's up. All right, get well fed and ready. Wonder if the helicopter event glitched because of the see. Yeah, that's fair. I think the helicopter event stops at 7 o'clock, but I can't remember if it was 7 or 8. But, nope. Alright. So, how would you handle this? Is the question, right? Do we, uh... Where is the noise coming from is the question, right? Which doors do you think are being hammered? Oh, no. You didn't see me. Maybe it's the front. Yep, it's the front. You can see that door moving, I think. Crap. I don't see any knocking over here, which is actually a good thing. Nope, I got some. I got some everywhere. All right. I think what I do is wait to see if they break down that door. If it happens, I can turn on the car and drive out of here. They gotta break down that door though. You hear the knocking as well? So instead of banging noises, you hear knocking as well. There it is. Oh god. I could run out this door too, but there's sprinters on. So if there's a bunch of zombies outside, I'd die. My anxiety, my anxiety. How, how, like I have, I've had goosebumps since the beginning. Ah, make a run for it, silly. I got, I got to get the RV out here. There's no way. If I leave this RV here, we're, we're dead for sure. Because we don't have another base set up at the moment. Oh. Ah. Oh. Can y'all like break down that door faster? <laughs> I'm like holding my breath. It is so intense. Oh. No way. Oh, they did it. Yo, yo. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Helicopter event should be over. Stop screaming. Jesus. 
<laughs> ah, okay, okay. It's still going. I'm not gonna compromise this space. But we're so tired. We're dead tired. Let's, uh. Well, I know what to do. We're, we're, we're gonna leave town for a little bit. Yep. <laughs> Gotta go, go, go. <laughs> Stop with the screaming. Who's that? Yo. Yo. Uh, <laughs> mm, look at that spurter. Dead. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. I want to destroy the car, but uh, I'll deal with what I got to deal with, man. Alright. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So this okay. So now this is the type of thing that may, makes me feel like this mod is not worth it. Uh oh, <laughs> Jesus! Look at that dude come before me. And there's still screaming happening. Like ugh, a level. Yep, we just uh, get out out of town. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Can my heart stop pounding, please? Like, I feel like I have palpitations. <sighs> Is this it? This is it. <laughs> Back of plant. I'm actually, at this point now, just sick of the screaming. Oh, so that chant can like stop for me at this point, but I wonder if calories burp more, but they're scared. <laughs> Fair statement. Ah, oh, all right. I accept that. I accept that. Uh, yeah. So we lay down. We go to sleep. We just think about what, what happened, you know? Oh, God. Channing noise is over. Helicopter event, you know, survived. And that was probably the most eerie things I've ever heard before in my life. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that definitely did it. I, I will say that there are sounds that are out of place in this mod. True. Oh, um, but was there an event that made me feel absolutely at the edge of my seat, my skin crawling for a moment? That was it. That was it. If there's anything I'll take away from this mod, it was that helicopter event turning the way it did. Add it to the noise of the beating and the knocking and the sound of the zombies, like, that was actually good. <laughs> ah, all right. Yeah, kill that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I don't have any good reading material. Oh, no, I left all the books back at the, uh, the fire station. That was great. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was. Okay, wait. As far as books are concerned, and... Did I, do I feel like I did justice to trying to defend the fire station? Yes, I'm actually glad I did the barricade setup like we did. Um, I'm also happy that I controlled the entry point. So when the garage door came down, bursting out with the RV felt natural. So I appreciate everything that came along with that. I do think there's a little bit of glitch work that happened with the helicopter event you spawning the way it did, but you know, it still worked out. So yeah, I'm not super mad about it in the sense. Like, I don't feel like I cheese it. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um, so now we're to that point, you know, where we get to start making some decisions. So first decision that we need to make is, uh, what is it going to take? to manage the RV because the RV is busted 
Yeah, the hood is now officially gone. Oh, um, which also means that the engine will start wearing down every time we hit a zombie and that's a problem. And this is our home at the moment. So I need to find, I need to start working on metalworking uh, for sure. I need to figure out where our base is going to be. Like our long-term base. Um, Cause RV is a nice mobile station, but it's not a long-term solution. So, if I recall correctly, PRMR said that maybe we go through Moldra, go towards the drug house den and use that as our actual base. We can actually get it set up the way that we usually do with power, water, so on and so forth, and use the RV as the norm. I'm hearing reclaim our books, which is a good idea. Very good idea, honestly. Uh, we're just not in the best situation without them. Can you go to the place where the RV inside is located and knock down the walls? No. So, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, can you enter the RV and knock down the walls? Yes. I do believe that it's possible to get a sledgehammer, knock down one of the walls, and then you can walk into this, oh, uh, this black space out here. You'll see at least, a, I think there's a staircase, and then you can see the water set up in the generators and so on and so forth. The way that power is set up inside the RVs is it's actually bound to the battery of the RV, if I remember correctly. So the battery condition and the remaining amount inside the battery is associated to the power of the RV. So those things are one-to-one, -one, which is also why it's a good idea to be able to manage your, your car, because you can swap out the batteries, you can charge it, so on and so forth. So yeah. Um, so to that, Reclaim our books. So reclaiming the books, actually getting back in town is the problem, right? Going into town in itself is going to be a challenge. Stopping at the fire station and then trying to get the books, you know, it's going to be a thing, but I think it's legit a good idea. After that, what I really feel like we need to do, hi, what I feel like we really need to do is except yo can you not i don't think i had scissors in the first place thank you sir anyway except that um i don't think this rv is going to survive i love the idea that you know we came into town after vacation or whatever reason why we were driving to kentucky with the rv it got us started in the zombie apocalypse and then we settled down somewhere i don't think that's a problem but uh it'd be nice to find another rv i know they're like i've put a whole mod in for other vehicle types that can do the same thing but i also see how our usual setup for sustainability doesn't work in an rv not unless you can maintain, you need metalworking, you need uh, mechanics if you really want to make it work. Because, jeez, don't yell at me while you're running at me. There's no way that I can, like, park next to the uh, gas station and use it. No way. God. Y'all better stop yelling. the auto shop i agree with the statement but look how many zombies there are i have not done a clear to this town so it'll be like i'm gonna hit up the auto station there's no way i would survive oh god don't destroy my engine how many runners i put seven percent sprinters so it's a lot actually um more sprinters than i am used to dealing with that's for sure all right so what do we do we kill the engine. We go for it. We go for it. I feel like we go for it. I still hear beating inside, and that's okay. Oh, we got zombies downstairs for sure. Get the books. Come on, guys. Get the books. Get the books. Get the books. Hurry up. Hurry up, man. Oh, we got heavy. Not that heavy. Come on. Uh, eat, eat, eat. Am I ready? 
yes, we had definitely a zombie follow us in, and there are zombies already inside the building, so. Oh. Uh, trying to keep it simple. Let me get the hell out of here. Let's go! Oh! Oh! Come on, man. Get this card. There is a, a safety factor that keeps us from going straight to the uh, the remote location. So you can't like just teleport if there are zombies. I think it's 20 yards close to you. You can change that if you want to. So I set it to 100. So if there are zombies like all over or you drove through a bunch of zombies and then you like warp to the other location, not cool. So I intentionally changed that so I wouldn't have that cheese either. Um, now, of course, you can still get in the car and drive, which is what we're doing. But I just wanted everybody to know that, you know, cheese tactics of being like, oh, I'm just going to go to the remote house and wait until the zombies clear. Nope. 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 And we're not playing like that. And of course, I dragged all these zombies onto the main road driving through here multiple times. All right. Don't want to lose the vehicle. Well, I keep it in relatively good condition. Oh, great. All right. All right, we did it. <laughs> yeah, we did it. The luck on that and those zombies near the RV. We ran for it, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> we didn't dilly-dally. You know, we, we got in, we got out, we kept moving. Now, I acknowledge that we had gone past many sprinters, so the fact that there are no sprinters sitting around, yeah, that's definitely a, uh, a luck element for sure. Okay, so we are out of town. Yay. I don't know some of these side roads and things that are around, so... Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, so where are we headed? I, like I said before, I think we are definitely going to do the Cracked Den. Um, that was called out last stream. I did like, I still like the idea, so, you know, my original reason why not wanting to go there was one, because resources, but now we actually have all the stuff that we need, um, you know, as far as equipment is, is concerned, and being right next to the Moldra means we have access to a lot of the warehouses, the, the best warehouses in games to get to, uh, in my personal opinion. So I feel like, you know, making it to that spot is just the question. Now, how do we get there is now the issue because I don't really know. The fastest way is to drive through here again. And again, I'm saying the fastest way, the fastest way I know is to drive through here again, get back to a road I know, and then take this road or smack dab in the middle of Muldra. I'm pretty sure Muldra is a few more units down this line. But if that's true, this is the south side of Muldra. So if I drive this down, oh no, wait. One of the playthroughs, we made it to that crossroads and then came north. So if I follow it down, I can come, I can completely avoid being in the middle of town. Just do I have enough gas to make it that far is the question. Maybe we play it out that way. Oh God. All right, all right, well, well let, let's see. We're gonna take the risk. Let's do something we don't know for sure is gonna work. Oh, uh, we will drive this through the way that I just said it, said it. If we do hit the crossroads, awesome. We'll take it towards the train state train station, the train yard. And then from the train yard, we'll kind of start working our way through. Oh, uh, if the RV survives that long. And that's really the major issue here, right? So drives faster. I wonder how fast is the faster car. Yes. So if we had a sports car, which we can actually drive. Goodbye. Zo oh, zombie, you're going to bed. Have a good evening, man. Good night. Uh, rest well. I was right. We'll see you in the next one, hopefully. You know. Ah. Uh, okay. So this is actually a really good spot. And if I had more time to loot around, I would. But I'm not really deal digging that. I think I have enough gas to make it all the way to that trailer. So let's let's make it work. Let's try to make it work. 
Yeah, but we ride this out. Oh, this will take us on the south side of the rail yard. And then from the rail yard, we follow it on the east side of the rail yard up. And then from there, we're good. So, and we've done this drive once before. We were a Sunday driver before, and we had a trailer. Ooh, my only concern is where do I turn off? Pretty sure I keep going. No, I don't. This ends. If anybody remembers this playthrough, I can't remember which character we did it with either. I think it was Raymond. Because Raymond had the trailer. Yeah, it was Raymond. It was early in Raymond's save because we had the trailer still. Oh, oh no. So another thing about the battery condition I forgot about. I think the battery recharges the more you drive. So if you leave the car on, just like an alternator, right? The battery gets better health out of it. I'm just trying to remember where to turn off. And I think I actually don't turn off. I think. We'll see. Pretty sure this doesn't just like keep driving. There is a legit winding effect that happens. So maybe I'm just overthinking it. And that's our issue. PR Marvel says, yeah, it was Raymond. Yeah, I'm feeling like it was Raymond because we had the trailer. We came all the way down here. We had the solar panels. We were setting up various different, you know, bases and whatnot. Here's the train. Yes, okay, so I'm all, I'm still on the right track. Sweet. <laughs> Pun intended, by the way. <laughs> all right. I was over here second guessing myself, and I need to stop doing that. It also means that you know our primary looting runs, and that's what we'll probably do in this playthrough. Then. We'll do a lot of looting runs to Moldra, and then from those looting runs, I feel like I've messed this up now. Mm. Where are we headed to now? We're heading to the south side of Moldra's uh, train yard, and then we're gonna bring up from the east side, heading north. I did. I overshot it. All right. I'm glad. I yeah, and then we're gonna bring up the east side of the Moldra train yard, and we're essentially going around Moldra. So any good trucker understands you know, having bypasses around any major town. Uh, that's what we're doing. We are taking a bypass around town. So, or at least that's the plan. But I, I definitely missed the turn off, and I'm glad that I had the good sense to remember pieces of this. But that means that the next turn we turn right, and then we keep going. Lots of driving when you are in Project Zomboid. Funny enough, this takes so much longer when you're a Sunday driver, and I'm so used to playing as a Sunday driver. This is, this feels very fast. So, we are almost to the turn. Now, do are we going to lose out on some experience? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Ah, <laughs> no, my engine. How bad is the engine? Two percent. Oh, the engine almost died. The engine just died. Oh, no. Oh, let, let's get there. Don't give out on me. Don't give out of me. <laughs> Can't hit anything else. I agree. Uh, the zombie, tree, bush. I don't even know if this engine will turn back on you know, if I turn it off. Gosh darn it. That just happened. It, it's almost over. The RV is a wrap. You can hear the engine like ticking and whatnot. No. Oh, man, come on. Get us there. <laughs> well, you're praying that the vehicle can keep... No, it just stalled. Ah, come on. I feel like I'm back in the 90s for real. We're driving the hoopty. See a lot of crashes coming. I'm not used to driving like this. I'm used to playing with Sunday drivers, so... 
That was intense. And in real life, I feel like I was driving fast enough to mess myself up. I hear you. Oh, uh, didn't die, which is good. We busted the windshield, so yay. Don't turn off. Or I do. All right, there's a possibility that I messed this up already. A possibility that I'll see us die. Yep, we gotta turn. We gotta go, go, go. This is pulling us right into the uh, train yard. We don't want that, so. Crap, 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 crap. Crap, crap, crap. Okay, we turn through here. Because if I go north, I hit. Mo no! Game! Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, new danger to Project Zomboy. Trees. <laughs> Goodness, you sitting there pumping the the uh, the pedal, trying to keep gas moving, keep the engine running. Hope that you don't see that white smoke or black smoke on the engine hood. Look, man, that, I feel like. I'm dating myself and I know that, but come on. You never thought it'd be so tense in the car in front. No way! No way! Oh my god. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Walking from here, no radio. Get in the car. Okay, so the question is, can I maneuver and not hit anything? That is the question. You just hear me. All right, did I do it? I did it. Oh, all right, we did it. We did it. We did it. Come on, man. We can do this. Another one. I just, I can't afford to lose anything on the engine. So. Shut up. Anybody back there? No, just tree moving. Nobody's a sprinter, right? I'm not used to these sounds, so based on the sounds, I can't tell how many zombies are around, and that's what's messing with me now. Uh oh. I do think next stream, I'm gonna get rid of the sounds. It was appreciated for the, um, the helicopter event, for sure. But I don't think I'm gonna appreciate it long term. Okay, we made it. Oh, uh, we at least made it through that. So, I know that, oh my god! No way. Do we die? I mean, we have to go through here. I, I've committed to this wholeheartedly. There is no way. That's how I feel. So, come on. That's not necessary at all. Stop all the shouting. <laughs> I'm, and then they like dispersed in the. Oh god. Hey. Right. Are you giggling? I'm just glad it wasn't like a group of sprinters. They were hiding. Yeah, they're definitely like put themselves in a situation where it's difficult to see. Like I said, we committed. Uh, that's a lot still. 
I mean, it's possible to get in the car and drive past a fair amount of them, right? Or do I, do we take that risk? Is the question. Do I get in the car, try to blow past them, and if I hit one, I feel like the engine's gone? Or do we take the risk, kill all of them? Yeah. So you, you just have to you just have to take the risk and fight every one of them. I got it. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, the whispering makes me feel good. I have room to back up on him. That's an interesting point. If I back up, I use the trunk, huh? That's a great point. I should have done that. And it's not like we're a Sunday driver, so we can get enough momentum to like get something going. But I, I couldn't maneuver. It would be a one-shot situation if I use the trunk as a weapon in this. Oh, and I didn't mold down the group. I don't know how that would have worked. We'd have to pull forward again, pull backwards. There would been no maneuvering. Okay, let's get out of here. I think we did it. Oh my god. Who knew driving across, you know, country <laughs> in the RV would be this dangerous. Now, mind you, the RV isn't over, right? So we can find engine parts and repair the engine. That is an actual process in game, you know, um, to managing the vehicle. So, yay, but goodness. It, we only had the RV for a week, and I'm clearly not a Project Zomboid driver. Okay, checkpoint number one. This lets me know where I am. Yay. These are all empty warehouses in the first place, so there's no reason to stop there. But we have based up, you know, our remote based up here before, so we know where we are, which is nice. Okay, so let's, uh, we keep driving this road until we make it to the first time we can turn left, if I remember correctly. Because at this point, there's no additional turnoffs until you turn left, and then we're basically there. Um, if we do lose the RV on the road, we can walk once we make it to that turn. And, oh my god. I want to talk about it. Not gravel road, by the way. I don't know where it's back in those type of things. So I'm not going to do do that to myself right now. We are just trying to get the RV there. I'm even doing the press the pedal and come off the pedal thing so I can ride the momentum instead of burning the gas. Oh, it did that. Yeah. I feel like I'm definitely back in the 90s, man. Definitely feel like I'm back in the 90s. So I'm saying that at my first vehicle was a Ford Explorer 1993, right? Oh, so I, I'm a big fan of Ford, but my Ford, we ran as a family down. Um, when I had it in my hands, it had 270,000 ish miles on it. Oh, uh, oh, come on. So you want to talk about a vehicle that I had to maintain to get through high school? Yeah, that was a thing. And then um, I think we hit around 340,000 miles on it. My father gave me a 95 and I told him intentionally, like I refused to like take another vehicle from you. So let me buy it. Um, so we went on Kelly Blue Book and I purchased the vehicle for my father at the value that we agreed upon. So. I'm a big fan of like a vehicle and engine that you have to work on uh, because it gives you a lot of respect for what a vehicle truly is. You know, getting point A to point B, caring for it because this is your ride is important. I, I'm, I'm that person and I feel like I've carried that today, but a lot of people aren't that, you know, it's like I need to get a lease for a Tesla. Like why? <laughs> Never wrong. I'm a big fan of electric vehicles as well. I'm not saying anything about it against that. But I will point out that, you know, if you can't manage your own vehicle without taking it to the shop, uh, you, you got to build some skills. You know, the basics, change the oil, work on the battery. <laughs> I said work on the battery. Know how to take the battery out if you need to, at the very least. 
think we made it. We just need to make it to that driveway and we're golden. I can see the building. Oh God, we're here, we're here. So this is gonna be home for a while, it seems. We're definitely not taking any long drives. There's no way this vehicle can make it all the way to Louisville, so. Okay, um, we'll pull it in here, just like so. Let's do this. Just hope we can repair it soon. Yeah. yeah. What is that playing? What is this? I missed something, which, okay, fair, but. Okay, so how this is probably going to work out is the RV will be our water source for a while, I think. I don't want to use it like that, but another point out is that we have a bunch of food in here. So I feel like the way that I'm going to make this fair is until we run the food down, we'll probably use the RV as we build up the other space. I think that's the way to do this. Um, we had all the, that entire sack of potatoes though. So cheers. Let's take a look at our food situation or our food situation, our weight situation. Oh, um, goodness gracious. Let's go ahead and slice the watermelon. All right. Slice watermelon. Good there. Lots of thirst out of that. So yay. And we'll just eat some. We should be tired. I feel like we did a ton of work to get here, killed a bunch of zombies. <laughs> we had reacquired all of our books. So we earned it, man. We definitely earned it. It was no simple task. All right, exit. Let's go take a look at the buildings and see what we got. Remember that I have the solar panel mod uh, enabled. So if I remember correctly, this is one of the spots in game that can have a solar panel entire setup spot. So we're talking about everything from the battery pack all the way down to just regular panels connected, um, which is nice. It won't be a full functional system. It is always a supplemental system in the sense that you're not getting 100% power out of it. You're only getting a few. Um, and it looks like nothing spawned. So that's good to point out. How do you build the battery pack? You need electronics level four or five. Looks like we didn't get any zombies to spawn, which is nice. Hang on one second and I'll show you what else you need and then we'll talk. Got some bullets, some guns, not much, but you know, blah. So electronics, here we go. And then, ah, I accident, sorry. There it is. Battery pack, I need metal working level two and electrical skills level four to build the battery pack. And then of course you need the inverter and that's the hardest thing to find. But because we're so close to the, um, the rail yard usually there's an inverter potentially a battery pack definitely some of the diy batteries and maybe a few panels we'll probably get to a point where we need to build panels not a big deal in my personal opinion oh uh, but we do have to work on the electrical skill which we have not done however being so close to moldra we have lots of opportunities to work on the electrical skill so um, i'm okay with that all right, so last building to check. Yeah, oh, this, so nostalgic. I've been here so many times with so many different characters. No, don't make me break one of these windows. I also don't want to have to disassemble a door, so sweet. So I have the mob, but I never know how to build it. Yeah, so um, with, and that's actually a good point real quick. So. A lot of people don't know if you install the mod, there is a 
box you need to check that allows you to build it, which essentially enables this, the new adventures energy for th from the sun magazine in game. It spawns the same way that the generators spawn. And that same thing is true for finding the battery packs. Um, anywhere a generator can spawn, you will find the battery packs as well. So once you've done all of that, then it's just a matter of getting the resources that you need. Um, but it's not easy. <laughs> it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. All right. So we're here. Looks like everything is still pretty good, which is good. So what is that I need to check in the mod uh, when you set up the world? Yeah. In your sandbox settings, um, there is enable recipes that you will have to check and that box needs to be checked. So that way that that is spawned in the game. If you don't check that, then what you end up with is having to find everything. Yes, I saw that. Yep. So if you didn't check that, what you end up with is having to find everything. So there will be a stash house. There are multiple stash houses, but the closest one that's easy to get to is next to Riverside. Yeah, it's Riverside right outside of town. And you'll be able to get an entire setup. Every warehouse will usually have a few solar panels, not solar panel parts. And then from there, you can, you know, piecemeal together a system. Oh, but I always check it on as a recipe because I'll put in the work to be able to build it. It doesn't make any sense for me to have to drive around the entire map to get one solar panel setup going. And that's how I've always felt, always felt about that. Okay. Um, so we're here. We're ready. How much time do I have? I've got plenty of time. So what we're going to do is decide. I think what this needs to be about. Oh, that sucks. I didn't originally think about having to do so much carpentry work, but now I do need to do carpentry work. And we're a chef and that's another big deal. Another big thing to call out, right? So as a chef, <laughs> we're not a park ranger, so we don't have the carpentry 75% bonus that I'm used to. We don't have the ax 75% bonus that I'm used to. The foraging bonus, we actually do have 100% instead of 125% because again, I'm used to playing as a park ranger. So the good part about being a chef is I at least get a bonus to maintenance. So my weapons will last longer. Cooking skill, super high, yes. But the reason why that's actually good is because it increases the calories anytime we cook something. The bad part is I kind of set this up expecting to be in the RV all the time. Um, but now the RV is basically shot and there's no way that you know, we're going to be in a situation of repairing it anytime soon. So what we need to do is acknowledge our limitations. And one of the big call outs is finish that uh, book. Goodness gracious. Why is this still playing? Look, bro. What do I have going? It's life and living. Yeah. Um, we need to finish the mechanics level one book. We made it through half of that. We need to start working on mechanics, which means finding a random car get it back here, disassemble it, reassemble it, disassemble it, reassemble it, so we can get build mechanics. Um, on top of that, we need to build electric. Uh, so the electrical skill is going to enable us to set up our solar panels. So, and we need to build carpentry. We're not prepared to do base work. We are prepared to feed ourselves. It's kind of it. So I think this is actually the worst off I've been in a long time following the helicopter event. I ain't gonna lie. Huh. That said, we are alive. <laughs> right? No matter how you look at it, we are alive. And if, you know, I, I can complain all day, but it's not gonna change anything. So let's get into a position where we start changing things. So first up, I think I'm going to abandon the idea of working on the mechanic skill. And that's only because I don't have a vehicle here um, that I can trash work on. So we will focus on the things I know I can do something about. One of those things is going to be the carpentry skill. So let's do what we can with what we have. That's kind of my point. Oh, I'm going to use the book. I'm going to put the books over here in a second just to drop the weight. And it's getting late. We're retired. Um, I don't think there are any more TV shows in the last cooking show. I don't really care about. So we're going to start 
you know, living our life. <laughs> um, this is our life. So what can you do about it? Keep the carpentry book with us. Go to bed. Get some Z's. You deserve it, man. <laughs> you deserve it. Training session, Silly B says. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Project Zomboid has a way of making you repeat the basics, which I don't think is a bad thing, honestly. Um, you know, you, you get, and actually changing your profession, changing your build is also kind of nice. It makes you do different things than you usually do. And I know that I'm not used to what I'm about to experience. So, um, yeah, yeah. All right, but we will make a conscious effort to use the food we have before we start foraging for food. Um, any foraging that I do will be for firewood, most likely, or I shouldn't just say firewood, any wood um, that we can get our hands on. That'll just save us time instead of cutting down trees and whatnot. Not to mention it'll save us on stamina. So yeah, uh, bull, bull, or bull, not bad a lot of thirst but those watermelons go a long way so if we didn't have a bottle i have a lot of watermelons too i just forget i forgot about that um so keep that we'll grab another set i'm gonna wait to start trying to put it on put on weight so i'm waiting to put on weight i don't mind dropping the kilos a little bit when we go underweight i'll start using some of our higher Oh, uh, calorie items, but I'm going to hold off on that for now. It's kind of what I'm calling out. Um, yep. So the reason for it is because once our cooking skill, you know, starts to go up, we're actually going to get more calories out of those things that we cook. So these lower calorie items, you know, the 10% gain that you get doesn't go as far. But when you start adding bread and other things like that, it goes super far. So we'll make our first trip towards town. That's what we're going to do. Oh. Uh, has he bulked up? No, no. Oh, uh, but we didn't start as obese or underweight. So we're pretty average. Just an average dude, you know. Maybe it's the clothes. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the clothes. Luckily, I haven't seen any like car spawns which is nice. We have a clear direction the other direction. Clear direction. Clear roads <laughs> the other direction. If I was heading towards the Dixie trailer yard, it might be interesting. But uh, for now, the question is, why am I going in town? You know, that's the first thing you have to ask yourself. I would like to find a vehicle. If I can't find a vehicle, the next best potential thing is to find a hiker so I can get a different bag. The bag I currently have is only giving me a 70% reduction. If I can get an 80 or 85, then I'm golden, right? Uh, the hiking bag is perfect. The big hiking bag, I'm sorry. Um, crap. What else do I need to get my hands on <laughs> now that we're in this situation? I think the car is definitely the number one. Yeah. We have what we need if I would have stayed back in the area to start like working our carpentry skill because an uh, interesting way to work on carpentry when you saw logs and when you make spears, you actually do work on carpentry. It's lower than you might think, but it, if I wanted to avoid combat or avoid all the craziness we're going to experience in town, I could do it that way. Um, but disassembling still better and if I can get myself into any of the houses on this road, and you know, maybe I should go back and finish reading this. So, nope, no, I just remember something. Am I tripping? Yeah, it's, yeah. Sprinter. Ooh, did you just trip, lady? <laughs> Game. Oh, electrical. We need to work on that too. So, we'll be collecting watches. By the way, I'm very shocked at that sprinter. I was not expecting to see a sprinter out here. So I need to stay on my guard. Uh, uh, set favorite, set favorite, set favorite. There it is. Okay. Um, so what would you do? It becomes the question. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's another thing. Um, 
as we walk into town, if we start finding things like the electrical setup, the battery pack, if we find the battery pack, that saves us a lot of work, honestly. And I think my personal opinion of working with the solar panel mod when you enable the recipes is if you can find the battery pack and batteries, you're golden. All you have to do is get your electrical skill up to level five and you can make all the panels. You can find panels, especially at the, the rail yard, but you won't find them all and that's just something to know however the battery pack because it requires level two work metal working as well to make it's annoying if you're just working off of one skill then you're you're golden um so in our case we do need to work on all of our skills again yay a little bit of base building true um but this is a different save and again always back to basics always back to basics all right, crossing this, we're into town of Muldra. So I have to give respect to Muldra. Give respect to Muldra. I've also noticed I haven't really appreciated the spawns. There have been a few times now where the road has spawned like a massive blob of zombies. I don't know why that's happening. Um, so when I fix the sound issue, I'm hoping that I can fix that spawning issue crap too. And it might just be because of how fast we were driving the game trying to catch up and it's like i can't figure out where to put things quickly and then it picks the spot right in front of you on the road ah all right yeah that sounds too crazy yeah so you know keeping things keeping things simple very important a good point the game could be coded to where you know if you're moving too fast to where the director can't keep up with you it fails safe by throwing a blob of zombies in front of you so that way you have to stop and then it can start spawning zombies around you it's fair well, i shouldn't say that's fair it's annoying if that's true but i can see that being a safeguard back be hurting very fast i mean you know if you have good posture which this back that's a bad posture. It's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. It's just your knees. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd be concerned about. It's the squat, not the back. All right, first house. Let's see. I hear zombie already. Ah, oh, that feeling. I see you back there. Oh, please be outdoors, zombies. Game. Take it easy, take it slow. I hear nothing so far. Blood stains. What are you trying to find? Honestly, getting to this house was my first idea because I wanted us to be closer to town while we work um, and as far as work is concerned you know what work are we going to do which this house is completely good to go which is nice uh, we're going to start working on our carpentry skill so uh, like I said before the best thing to do for carpentry is going to be disassembling rather than being outdoors and having to build stuff and so on and so forth um, because the make and build is kind of annoying in my personal opinion so the next thing if I really want a base setup I need to collect collect garbage bags 
Um, so, you know, we're in base building mode. That said, the way to do that is going to be disassembling. That means I need access to lots of different materials and going through these houses and breaking things down is going to be helpful. Also being here and reading books. So we're going to read the book first. That way we get the full bonuses. We will disassemble everything down this house, hopefully, and then move on to the next house. We'll grab the trash bag outside, maybe a few more resources, and just kind of keep moving down the line. I did not get the electronics level one book along with me to disassemble the lamp, but we can pick up the lamp and take it with us. So uh, there are a lot of you know ways to solve issues. Oh, God. Um, so let's make some food. I don't think I really thought through my food situation coming out here. And that's also because I wasn't thinking about a long-term trip, but that's what it is. Wow, those apples sucked. All right, cool. Uh, I guess we'll make a salad. No, yeah. everything was stale. Keep us happy, keep us fed, very important. There we go, hunger 24, I'll take that. Perfect. Continue to read the book. If I finish reading the book and then start disassembly, I'll get the most out of bonuses here. So I can hit level four, hopefully in this one house, after I'm done doing all the disassembling and then move on. Uh, I'll probably keep one bed assembled in my big brain head so I can sleep here tonight before I move on to the next spot. So lots of work to get done. And if you recall when we did West Point and we cleared out of all of West Point and Raymond save, we were going house to house disassembling lamps at one point. Like this, this is the way that you play Project Zomboid. There is a living aspect and we are in living aspect mode now that we survived the helicopter event. Oh, I say that we've survived the helicopter event a couple of times and lost a few characters before. So, um, yeah, but getting as much out of this as possible, kind of what we're going to do. The beds look like they're really good for experience. And if I look at that, that's going to drive me crazy. So, Oops. so I said before that if I pick up the lamps, that might work for us. I don't know what it's going to be like picking up. Don't like the wallpaper. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> oh, it's very, uh, I mean, there are people who really like this wallpaper, right? Oh, um, you know, let, let me say that it is not from an era that I personally appreciate, but other people do for sure. Be okay with the pattern for a summer dress. I mean, I could, I get that too. I don't think I personally would be, you know, rocking the summer dress, but I can see an individual. Where, yeah, it's only two encumbrance. That's fine. So we take the lamp with us and we just stick in the bag and disco. What? Does zombie hear us downstairs? Ugh, I'm literally sitting here waiting for a zombie that I can hear. I already shouted. Get up here. There's another zombie. Too extra for no reason. Maybe I'm not sleeping here tonight. 
They're knocking on the door. Well, where did you come in through? I thought you would have came through this one, though. You did. Okay. Woo. Um, crap. Okay, so that changes that a little bit. Did I get enough? I've got one plank. What attracted me there is probably the fact that I was disassembling things right there and I was making a lot of noise. Check the house before I start trying to barricade that window, by the way. Everything looks good. Yes. Yes. All right. And then we barricade. Perfect. Barricade again. If I can just find one more nail. Say one more thing I need. No, I've got enough. And barricade again. All right. See? Skills. <laughs> Project Don Boy skills. This is how we survive. This is how we're going to make it. At least I hope we're going to make it. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Why? Game. Game. Is this a good quality? It's a bad quality. You don't sleep in the chair. Uh, I can't be Mama Murphy and sleep in the chair. Alright, what, what are we dealing with here? So it's food wise, we'll make another salad before we go to sleep. Did I take the hungry trait? No. Yeah, I did. I took the hearty appetite trait. I did. Which I don't think is a bad thing, um, especially for the way we play. It reminds us to eat. There are going to be plenty of times where it's like, yeah, you should have eaten X, Y, and Z. And that's where you're losing weight, you know. Um, so I actually like the hearty trait because it makes you eat. Now, if you're a player who's like, I eat fish always, you know, that then it, no, it's not a good idea for you. But for those of us who eat l less calories per sitting, is definitely a good idea. All right, so we lie. We sleep. Okay, how are we doing? I like the true actions mod. Yeah, um, you know, it, it gives a nice flair to the things that we're doing consistently, so. It's not just you click the button, you sleep. It's like, no, it gets in the bed and it lays down. I didn't hear anything break. I got no visibility down here. Lights. Lights? Light switch. Anywhere. There we go. Is there a light switch in here? Yeah, there is. All right. Is there anybody outside? Nothing. Good. Do I see anything out there? No. We'll just close the curtain. Love the one that character I just lays down. Yep. So, true actions mod. If you're not already aware, for those of you who watch this on YouTube later, oh uh, yeah. What close? Did I remove? No. I was trying to remove, wasn't I? Close curtain. All right. So now we should be fairly free to walk around in here. Making noise is going to be a thing for sure, but you know, what can you do about that? Um, so question 
is do I still do what I'm doing? <laughs> I feel like part of me should just grab a bed and go back. Um, actually, I feel like I should go back in general. I don't feel like I'm really prepared yet to deal with everything I'm, I need to be able to deal with out here. I do not have enough food on me. Yes, this kitchen does look like it's going to do the trick. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. God. Finish the house and get, go back and regroup. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Hopefully it gives us the rest of the level for Carpentry Level 4. Because if that happens, then we get to read the Carpentry Volume 3 book. So, yeah. I think that's a solid idea. The only hope now is that we don't attract a whole bunch of attention and it breaks down any of these windows. But starting down here made a lot of sense because zombie migration and how it works. Um, there are no zombies out there when I was looking before, so I shouldn't be making so much noise that I attract any attention. This would allow sound to get out when I start disassembling these though but they can't see inside. So if anything does happen, they'll start beating on this, um, which is okay, I suppose. So let's get it. Container, stuff inside. Put this down. I do have a pen, so I'm not worried about grabbing the pencil. I'm gonna just keep disassembled, keep working. You gotta remember that I have the, um, what is it? Stay away from the windows mod or something like that, where instead of them falling through the window, they jump through. Um, so another thought to have while I'm working out here. Meaning I have less time to react. <laughs> A lot less time to react. Okay, so now that we're down to working upstairs, let's take a look. Oh, almost there. I don't think we're gonna finish it before we're done, but still not bad. Get there. Drop all this on the ground. This is <laughs> Really? This is books nothing I wonder can i just disassemble the bookshelf yes i can and tailoring level three book interesting disassemble are we good almost almost Why did I do that to myself? <laughs> um, I think I've disassembled everything. Crap. Like I said before, I do want to leave the bed just because if we decide to use this as mobile base, we can sleep in the bed, you know. It's like you just moved into the house and you haven't unpacked anything but the bed. You know, that makes sense. Um, crap. Uh, so it's not terrible, though. I'm just trying to think of a good way to handle this. There is a needle and thread here. I don't think I have a needle and thread. Let me take them and then let's take a look at something real quick. Carpentry. Spikes, no mortar. I don't have a mortar pestle. I'm sorry. Thank you, game. That worked for me. Did that give me experience? I'm curious. Nah. Okay. Filter all and spares. And the drill plank is a good idea if I don't have matches. Do I have matches? I have matches. Yes, I have plenty of them right now. So I'm not going to worry about that. The spears. So my issue with making spears right now. Does the sturdy stick 
actually give me experience. Take a look. So our current experience count is 677, uh, 677.17. If I make a set of sturdy sticks, do I get experience out of that? Yes, one. <laughs> Not at all worth it. It's far too heavy to work with. Make it splint. Yeah, that's not gonna work for us. All right, making a spear. How much do I get out of it? Uh, one. <laughs> All right. That's not gonna work either. It wasn't one. It was like two. But um, mm. take the spear with us because weapons are better than not having them, right? Everything else I will leave alone, but it's good to know. Absolutely good to know. So I think what we're doing is heading back. Um, empty out water now too, it looks like. I suppose I can, nope, can't do anything with that cabinet. Uh, I can disassemble you though, white cabinet. So what is the disassemble amount on a cabinet worth? It's worth about six. Okay. Bathroom is nice. It is. At least it's not terrible. So we fill our bottle. And we start heading out. Don't think there's another way of looking at this. I say we start heading out. Uh, we're hungry. Just eat the broccoli and call it. No, so the problem with the sink is you have to actually use metalworking to get rid of the sink first before you can disassemble the counter. So I already knew that one. The entire bathroom is metalworking, basically. Alright. Ooh! Big brain idea. Uh, first, let's do that. You can disassemble the doors. I just thought of that before I, I left. So we're at 703 at the moment. Let's see how much it gives us. That's not bad, actually. That's a lot. Um, then we just disassemble some doors. So the door disassembly should do the trick if my math is correct. Got it. All right. And now we go back. <laughs> so that worked for us. And now to get our bonuses again, we need to read the next carpentry book. So important to have game knowledge and get you far and then we'll eat some granola oh wait before I forget trash bag is what I'm grabbing real quick funny enough with trash bags you can actually forge for those um, they're in the trash <laughs> the trash category when you forge but still See, like, it's a an item that can be found via foraging um, entirely, which is actually pretty nice because if you did play a, you know, wilderness playthrough for some reason, um, you could still find trash bags to make rain collectors. So even if there aren't garbage cans around, search with the trash focus and you'll find them. Just a tip. All right, let's get home. Um, zombies can be found around here, so I'm trying to avoid making too much noise. I think I've got I've got lucky with spawns though, so I'm happy about that to a degree. Now, while I'm sitting here thinking about it, what killed us last time? 
we were playing with the character. Oh, um, we were doing fine. Something killed us. I can't remember. If anybody recalls, please let me know. I'm not talking about Raymond Slim. I'm saying that we had made it past the, like it was before this. I even stopped playing. We played Fallout for a moment, which that goes to show you that it takes me a little bit to get over it. When I once I get over it, it's out of my head, <laughs> which is terrible. I know that, but still, the the playthrough that we just finished prior to you know the Fallout situation. I, I'm asking. Oh, uh, what were we doing? Got killed by a runner while you're using gun. Yes, we had set up the trailer. We did not have the RV at the time. We found ourselves in Doe Valley and we did the gun setup. The gun setup didn't work. We switched to melee and then we died at the church parking lot. That's what it was. Yes. And the church parking lot, it was because we didn't have multi hit turned on. So collision happened where the slow zombie came in. I thought I was shoving the sprinter. Sprinter grabbed me. And then the three zombies, you know, decided to have their way with me. Oh, I recall. I mean, it's pain, you know, and you have to remember that I'm the type of person who has to compartmentalize and let go of the pain that we experience. Yeah, with sprinters, the uh, multi hit is definitely a must, and that's true. We decided that, you know, multi hit it needs to happen if we're going to make this work uh, with the sprinter starting on. So. They were good, though. Oh, oh. See, I think we're good. You have a metalworking mask? Oh no, did I break the mask? Uh, I broke the mask. Darn. No, that wasn't metalworking. You just have a messed up face, jerk. Okay, oh. Let's get out of here. This could work on our sprinting skill too, right? Yep, it works on our sprinting skill. We're not actually sprinting, we're jogging, but you do get a random point towards sprinting or fitness when you run. So, yeah, so sprinting is going up a little bit of fitness, but more sprinting. Going up pretty well, actually, if I th look at it. That's the type of thing that'll bug me. It's like watching paint dry. I know that. Oh, I didn't even notice the time. Goodness, it is already 10.17 Eastern Standard Time. Man, we time flies when you're having fun. It definitely does, which means that we like this playthrough. <laughs> it can also get us killed. Oh, God. All right. Sweet. Let's take the lamp out real quick. Just put you down. Place the lamp. Has a beard. Yeah, he does have a beard. It's definitely kicked in. We don't want the lamp turned on so we don't burn the bulb. Oh. But this is our life. And we are home. We've got food. So let's stick these bad boys in here for now. I have a fair amount of perish uh, non-perishable items and I have a lot of perishable items. So we still need to get through all the fresh stuff and lots of things are gonna start turning soon. So I'm gonna be in the habit of cooking more for sure. Uh -oh. Don't like an autumn. I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't like the mullet. Um, I've left it just because, you know, we started with it, but as the hair grows and changes, we won't have the mullet again. I ain't gonna lie to you. But that's a personal preference thing. I don't think it's necessarily bad. It's just, I'm not a mullet person. I, I recognize that. I'm saying mullet. Mullet. For those of you who are gonna come at me, especially in the comments in YouTube later, mullet. <laughs> I know it's not a thing. It's definitely outside of my generation personally, but you know, here you go. 
don't even recognize that as a mullet. Uh, it's there. It's there. It's just because he has black hair. Like, if he was a blonde and you could see the edges properly and whatnot, it'd be a different thing. So. All right, we're good. Um, book. We were saying that we finished Carpentry Volume 2. So, book go away. Oh, my goodness. I didn't get the Carpentry Volume 3 book. Oh. I never picked it up. I never picked it up. I can't believe that. And it's because I was saying to myself that I wouldn't have to use carpentry. This run through I was going to be using the RV and keeping the RV in good condition was fine. So I wouldn't have a base. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, like the dread that I have because now I'm in Muldra and I'm like, I know where to get the book, but... It is a nightmare to walk through to try to get to the book. But it's going to be no walk in the park to make it to carpentry level 7 for the rain collectors. So, do I need it right now? No. It's three levels, though. So, finding car carpentry volume 3 would exponentially make this easier. Oh, my God. Book run. Yeah. We need a car. We need, we need a car. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, we deal with what we got, right? We deal with what we got. That said, let's start closing up for the night. That's what we need to do. <laughs> I turn this back on. Anyway, turn it off. So let's take a quick inventory and we'll do it sitting inside the RV out here, right? Um, <laughs> goodness gracious, on this wonderful Sunday evening, we made it to the Muldrow Crack House. Um, and this is going to be our new home. We've destroyed our engine. It is condition 2%. I've never done this to a car before. I've lost every headlight. I lost the windshield. The hood is shot and the engine is almost gone. Our battery is dying. Oh, and that's a problem. That problem is going to impact our power inside the RV. So those things are tied together. And the only thing I can think of to fix that at the moment is if I uninstalled the battery and reinstalled a better one. So that actually is going to be an option for us. Oh, we, if we want to keep power, for a while for this RV. That's what's going to need to happen. And it's being drained because we are using the appliances inside. Now, that puts us in a weird position because, you know, being all the way out here means we do need to be able to make supply runs into Muldra. Oh, uh, Riverside did us dirty. That's not Riverside. I'm sorry. <laughs> Riverside did us dirty. But we survived the helicopter event here. So, you know, yay. And in truth, if I had really been strategic about it, we could have just hit all of the different garages down here and look for these things. Like we would have been able to get the battery. We could have been able to get a, a generator. There's a list of things we can get. Oh, uh, now that we're in Muldra and effectively on foot, we have to do, you know, some work. We have to do some work, but um, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. We still have power. We still have water for now. And we are in a safe space, um, as safe as you possibly can speak to, right? But it, I think a major thing that I love about Project Zomboy is you being able to adjust to the unknown. We need some books. We need some books. <laughs> oh, and of course, we need to find out what it means to be a true survivor. So at least the RV survived the helicopter event. The RV did survive the helicopter event, and it's what actually got us through the helicopter event. I cannot imagine having to have fought, fought through so many other sprinters that came along. So with that, we do have an entire space here. And I'm interested in knowing if anybody has a, a preference, if I should base up and, you know, turtle for a while, or if we should do our best to focus strictly on the RV. Uh, yeah, I want you guys who are on stream to think about it, come back to me with it. Uh, and then of course, anybody on YouTube, give me your opinion. Yeah, give me your opinion. Book and car parts. Yes, books and car parts is one of those thoughts. 
but working with the RV kind of changed the pace of the game in my personal opinion and I'm, I'm leaning towards that and no problem with saying it but at the same time we still need a safe space to live so when the RV at the moment shuts down on us which I don't know how long that battery is going to last um, you know this is going to be our safe haven and there's nothing wrong with that what was the question it was should we be basing up or should we be trying to repair the RV at all costs um with repairing the RV at all costs, it's gonna come down to finding engine parts so we can move it. So that's gonna be one thing. And then next, obviously repairing as much as we possibly can. There's always the possibility of finding another RV though. And if we find another RV, it's a whole different ball game again. So thoughts to have and things to know. That said, you know, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun playing. I've seen duffel bag. I didn't really check all this properly and I can see lots of opportunities. But with that, I think it's time to, you know, sign out. As usual, I say it all the time. I've got to work. I've got to work in the morning and I got to call it the night. But it's been fun. Oh, thanks for everybody who's popped in. Misfit, great to see you. Zombie, hey, he's not here anymore. But again, thanks for popping in. Silly B, love you. All right, join the random zombie mod. It's still here with us. And PR Amara, as usual, kicking it. All right, it's time to say good night. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers.